Hi, I'm Sarah Thamel with 31 Gifts, and I am doing a training for Team Raw Raw and anyone else that wants to watch this video on YouTube. So I have been asked by a few team members uh, to do a quick training on hostess coaching. So we're going to talk real quick about hostess coaching, and it's going to be pretty basic, but I'm going to kind of walk through what I do for my hostesses and uh, just share a couple of resources that are available on TOT as well. So. Um, for those of you that would like to get some um, checklists on TOT, you can go to learn and then party, and then you go to before the party, and there is there are some resources here. Um, on the right side, you'll see that there's a hostess rewards flyer, and then there's a host, hostess coaching checklist that's face-to-face, -face, and a hostess coaching checklist for online parties. They are gonna be different somewhat, although you have um, a lot of the same things in those. But you have each of these you can print out. And we have had some people suggest creating a binder, which I don't have a binder for hostess coaching, but it helps some people where you have a three ring binder and then you would print out um, the hostess coaching checklist, both the face-to-face face -face parties and the online, and you would have tabs, like 12 different tabs in this binder for January through December for your entire year, and then you would put as many parties um, in each month that, that you plan to have for that year. So it helps you try to stay accountable as well. So if you want to try to have two home parties in a given month, then you would include two hostess coaching checklists for face-to-face uh, -face parties and then a few online as well. So those are great resources in there. And um, then it talks about hostess packets. Okay, so let me um, go ahead and share with you what I do. I'm going to go ahead and not share my screen right now and I'm just going to talk with you and then we'll go back to my screen here in just a little bit. But uh, first of all, you have to determine the right party type for your hostess. So um, sometimes it's obvious, sometimes they're out of town and you obviously know, hey, this is going to be a catalog or an online party. It's got to be one of those because we can't do face to face. But um, in any case, find out what she wants to do because even if you've done several parties with her uh, where she's done a catalog party with you before, maybe she wants to try an online one this time. So uh, talk with her about that and get the right party type determined. And the very first thing that you got to do after that for me is setting expectations. And I've talked with some team members about this before, but um, it's important that you do your parties how you want to do them and you party when you want to party because it's your business and you're your CEO. And it's important that people are flexible for what you are going to be doing, okay? So uh, while we can be flexible with our hostesses and our customers, they need to party how we're wanting to party as well. So hopefully that makes sense. We do their party type, but we have a certain way that we want to do that. Um, for example, um, when I'm setting expectations, I'm going to be walking my hostess uh, through what I'm going to expect of her. And I tell my hostesses flat out out front, I'm, I tell them the majority of your work is going to be up front. You're going to have uh, things to do um, every day during the party, but I'm going to expect you to do certain things in the beginning before we even get started because it's so important um, to personally reach out to and invite your guests individually instead of a group message or text. Um, it's so impersonal. And so there's a lot of effort on the front end. Are you okay with that? You know, I ask them, uh, I get their buy-in because if you don't have their buy-in on that, then it could flop, flop pretty quickly um, because some people just don't want to put the effort in simply. So, um, and sometimes if that's the case, if she doesn't, if she doesn't want to reach out to her friends individually, maybe a catalog party is better for her because with a catalog party, um, that hostess is going to be responsible for gathering all the orders and the consultants is really kind of out of the loop on that. Um, they're there to support, but they're not going to be making the online posts and I'm not going to have the same stipulations on my hostess as I would if I were doing an online party or a face to face party. So if, if, it's, if it's a hostess that um, kind of doesn't want to go with how you have it planned, you may want to offer a catalog party for her because um, you don't want her to be frustrated with how you want it done and you certainly don't want to be frustrated and waste your time. Um, okay, so for example, um, she, might not, she might not respond soon enough to you 
um, as you're corresponding with her and it might make it seem like she's kind of disengaged. So just flat out ask. Um, you've got to be honest and upfront with your hostesses and say, hey, Sally, um, I have sent you a couple Facebook messages. I'm trying you by text now. Um, please call me as soon as you can so we can get your party details lined out. If you still don't hear from your hostess, if she's MIA, you might be having a bigger problem on your hands, but try to keep the lines of communication as open as possible so that she's comfortable talking with you. Even if she needs to postpone her party to another date, maybe she got too busy and didn't realize how much was going to be involved. So um, let's say everything is all good. She doesn't have any qualms with how you want to do things with um, having the personal invitations and um, the effort that she's going to have to put forward. So you're ready to rock, rock and roll. So the first thing that you might want to consider doing is, um, well, first of all, you got to send her the hostess packet, right? Or meet up with her in person and give her the hostess packet. And um, once you've done that, you want her to see the hostess rewards and to be able to uh, look and see what party level she really wants to hit. So she, her goal might not be the same as your goal for, for her. My goal for my hostess is I want them to hit 1200 because I really want them to get all of that free product and the three free hostess exclusives because if they are um, seeing a lot of success and a lot of hostess rewards, then that means the personal volume is up there and my commission is higher. So the more they win, the more I win. So I want them to get those $1,200 parties as much as possible. But you might have hostesses that are like, well, I really like to just shoot for $400 uh, to get the $90 in credit. Okay, awesome. Let's shoot for that um, and hope for more, right? So have them make a wish list. So if they want to hit that $400 party or $600 party or $800 party, um, tell them to make a wish list of the items that they would like to get with their free rewards because then later on you can use that in the party um, for them. They can say, hey, um, I've hit the, my level to get this product that I really love. Thank you, friends, so much for ordering. Um, it's a way for her to be engaged and for her to show her friends what she's working towards, okay? So a wish list is good to have. Um, help her to make a guest list if she is struggling. You're gonna wanna reach out to her and say, hey, how are the invites coming along? Um, do you need help with that? And if she says, well, I've been sending out my invites and haven't gotten a whole lot of responses, then you might want to go ahead and go, uh, go into the Franks um, invitation method with her and Frank's stands for, I've got it written down here, um, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, kid connections, and spouse connections. So you can go through those things with her to jog her brain, her jog her memory of who all she knows, because she's going to know a lot more people than what she thinks that she knows. And those, um, people she can send out invitations to. So you can help her um, not only think of who to invite by offering that Frank's method, but you can also offer uh, to send out a personal VIP text to her top 10 people that she would really like to come. If you really want to give pink glove service, it's not necessary, but it's just an extra special nice thing to do for your hostess. Okay, so you have uh, determined the right party type. You have set expectations or you have tried to start setting them by letting your hostess know what to expect. And you have asked her to make a wish list. And then um, she needs to have her guest list going as well um, and help her if, if needed. And then you can go ahead, because um, she's got the hostess packet, go ahead and send her the hostess portal link on 31 today. So I'm just gonna share my screen really quick just to make sure that those watching um, know what I'm talking about with sharing that screen, okay? So I'm gonna go to virtual office, or not sharing the screen, but uh, sharing the link. I'm gonna go to parties, and I'm gonna go to my open party for that I always have open. So December customer orders, and your, let's see here, down, okay, I'm gonna go to Hostess on the left side, I forgot about that. So you're gonna go to Hostess and then you scroll down and it talks about the Hostess portal down here. Um, the Hostess portal is a link with their login information and their password. And if you hit this send button, it will send an email to them 
so that they can log in. The hostess portal is a really good feature to use and I highly recommend using it uh, because your uh, hostess can see the same thing that you see here on these orders uh, once they're in the cart and everything, once they check out, they can see these orders in here and they can check their hostess rewards at any time uh, to see where they're at and they can go in here and select their hostess rewards. So that's really awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, but the hostess portal is um, something that um, is not brand new, but a brand new feature for, for this year anyway, 2018, was to um, go ahead and make it to where they are able to select their hostess exclusives and their credits and everything. Okay, so we have sent that along. And um, once you've done that, then you're going to um, give her some verbiage to use, all right? So what I do, let me go to my, um, my message real quick, and I will show you what I do on my Facebook, if I can get to it, right here. Okay, so Shayla is uh, one of the hostesses that I had last month, and I will share with you some verbiage that I used for her. And this is what I do with all of my hostesses. Okay, so I have a party group page that I invite all my hostesses to join and I'll show you the party group page. It's called Welcome to the Party with Sarah Thummel. And I invite all my hostesses here. I can go to my photo albums and my hostesses are in this particular album. So I had all of these hostesses for the month of November. And Shayla, whoops, what am I doing? My bad. And that's the wrong group. Sorry about that, one moment. Welcome to the party. Okay, so in my party group page, and, uh, whoever just joined us, if you could go ahead and hit mute, and then if you've got a question, I will get right with ah. you. Okay, so I'm going to go to my photo albums and my party group page. And Shayla was uh, one of my hostesses from that. Uh, but this is how I get all my hostesses together um, on that party. And that, that would be a different training. But just to show you that um, I do have a party group page that I invite them to. And then I um, have communication with most of my hostesses on Facebook Messenger so I can keep track of it easy. So I let them know, I say, you've been invited to the party group, um, and I give them the link to make sure that they know to check that, um, and I let her know to continue to invite the guests via personal messages and texts, and add them to the group once they have accepted. Now, an important thing to realize if you're going to be adding people on an online event or group um, to make sure you understand that it is not, let's see here, I had a note here. Um, it, the Facebook event should be used as a follow-up method, not an invitation method, okay? So the invitation is before you actually invite them, okay? So I'm telling her to keep track of people that don't respond to her because she's going to have them and they will be added later on in the week, and I'll give her the verbiage to say about that as well. So I'm, again, I'm giving her the group to join, and I'm also confirming her address here to send her hostess packet. So this next message is the verbiage that I send to all my hostesses. It says, hi Sally, I would love to have you join on my online party that begins later this week. I look forward to sharing the holiday items with you. It's a great special this month to help you get ready for Christmas. Will you join me online via Facebook? So what I've done here is I've asked Shayla to copy and paste this message to her friends and of course replace Sally with their name to make it personal. And I also let her know, do not send group messages, do not send group texts because it's so impersonal. So uh, we want an individual invitation and to follow it up with the Facebook group or event. Okay, so then I noticed that Shayla joined the party group page, and I thanked her for joining the group page. Um, you have today and through Thursday to get your guests added, because I had planned on starting that party on Friday. And I'm letting her know, unfortunately, Facebook has gotten a little finicky. After everyone is invited, you will then need to send everyone a personal message or text to let them know they will need to join the group to see the posts. 
say something like, I added you to my online Facebook party. Please look for the ad. It's a group page called Welcome to the Party with Sarah Thummel. Not sure there, if there's a join or accept button, but you have to click something for it to work right. Would you let me know, please, when you're in? So again, I'm telling my hostess to communicate with her guests specifically this information, and all she has to do is copy and paste that, okay, so that she can easily try to get them added. And let's go down here. Okay, and then, so she has added her guests, and then I'm coming back to her, to, and I'm saying that I'm touching base with all my November hostesses to make sure we're on track. Um, all the pre-invites to the party should be wrapping up. You should start adding them to the group party page on Facebook. So again, the pre-invites, the pre-invitation is the personal message before Facebook comes into play. Okay. And then, um, I, it says, I will attach a visual for you to see how to add members from your phone. So I went ahead and, and did that as well so that it would be easy for her. Um, and I said, I'm sure you reached out to some people that have not yet responded to you. If that's the case, please go ahead and add them to the group at this time. Send them a personal text or message that says, and here it is, since I didn't hear back from you regarding the online event, I have added you as a courtesy. I don't want you to miss it. Please accept the request to join the group. Welcome to the party with Sarah Thummel. The party format is amazing. Join the group and it's basically at your own pace with some posts beginning this Friday. Okay, so this information right here is for the hostess to copy and send to her friends. Um, all hostesses that accept the invite to join the party group are made moderators so they can add their guests. So um, if you're not sure how to do that, I will show you real quick. So here's my party group page. I'm gonna go to members. And um, I have all of these ladies set up as moderators because they were my hostesses in November. So here we have Shayla. And I'm going to remove her as a moderator for now. Oh, good grief. I don't even know if I know my password. So forget it. I don't even know my password. Um, but basically, you can make any, let's just make anybody. Let's go to members. So like Denise, she is on my 31 team. So if I wanted to make her a moderator, I would just go over to the dot, 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 and I would click make moderator. So then she could add anybody she wants to the group and get them approved. So that's what I do with all of my hostesses. And I make sure that they know that, that they are a moderator. Okay. And then I have attached um, the images that they'll see. I've circled where the guests are and the, where the add button is and um, the people that have been invited. So the way Facebook groups are working now is that once you have them added, they have to add themselves as well. So it's an extra step and it's an extra thing that you have to, um, um, that you have to coach your hostess on. So she knows to get with them and say, Hey, you need to go ahead and accept the invitation. All right. So and then I'm touching base, asking her how, how, how the invitations are coming along and that the party's going to kick off tomorrow. That information's up here. So again, I'm in daily communication with my hostesses. And then um, I also um, let her know, here's a couple images you can use. Please choose one to post on your timeline and that it might add one or two more people to the group by doing so. And then I gave her a couple pictures she can choose from. And I did that the day before the party. And then I also send along some hostess coaching tips as we go. Um, tips for hosting a successful party. And I also have um, three more images that I can share with you that um, I'll attach when I when I post this recording in the team page. I'll attach some images as well in the comments that you could also use besides this. So I like to use this one, but there's another one you can use. And um, okay, so that's pretty much as far as I'm going to go ahead and get out of that communication. Um, stop the share and I'm just going to talk with you. Oh, that's Shelby. Hi, Shelby. I see that you're there now. Um, so I just went through and talked about sending the hostess packet, setting expectations, helping her, um, um, send invitations out, helping her realize who her people are that she needs to add. Um, and then getting them on the Facebook group or event being a follow-up method, not the actual invitation method itself. Um, because the invitation is beforehand. So then 
I talked to my hostess about trying to collect outside orders before uh, the party starts. And I let them know, hey, if you can collect $200 in outside orders before the party starts, I'll have an extra special prize for you. So um, that doesn't happen very often, but it can. And it helps motivate them as well to start getting the word out. And then also to collect outside orders for people that are not on Facebook. So we're going to talk online or in-home parties in just a moment. I'm talking online for now. Um, but when you ask them to collect outside orders, that's also a good time um, to, uh, oops, sorry, I was on my wrong page. Okay, um, what I was gonna say is that's a good time to also explain to them that um, you'll be giving them a couple posts during the course of the party that they can post, but if they have any products that they can share with their friends, then that's even better than, um, than I don't have to share posts for them to actually make. Because really the thing is, is their friends want to hear from them. They don't really care to hear from the consultant that much because their friend is the one that invited them there and that they care about and love and that they would like to help. And that's why they're there, right? They're there to hear about the products, but they would rather hear about it from their friend. So try to get your hostess engaged, um, if not daily, at least a few times during the course of the party to share her products with her friends. All right. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, and she can also uh, post a welcome to the party and tag her friends on the event or group once they're there, because um, it helps them to feel important and brings them into the group. Uh, remind the hostess to comment and reply to all of your posts. Make sure she interacts with her online guests if she is at, she is at <laughs> I can't talk, as if she were at a home party with them. Uh, hostess posts about her favorite items, showing them in use, or posts pictures of products on her wish list gets them excited about ordering. So again, uh, we talked about her wish list. So if she wants to talk about things that she wants to get, then that's fantastic. Um, you need to ask your hostess to reach out to people that are not on Facebook to collect outside orders and, um, and make sure that she follows up with people that have expressed interest, but that have not yet ordered. So as the party goes along, um, she can follow up with people and let them know, hey, I've got four extra customer specials available right now. My host or my consultant can add those for you at any time. Um, just go ahead and let me know if you want those specials or you've got to get that order in by Friday because I'm going to be closing the party. Just have her follow up pe with people that have shown interest. Okay, so then if you have determined with your hostess that the, that the in-home party is going to be what you're gonna do versus um, an online party. So there's a little bit of a difference there. So with an online party, you're going to ask originally for them to just reach out to 20 to 40 friends and to personally reach out to them on an individual basis. If it's an in-home party, um, they want you want them to reach out to as many people as they can possibly reach out to and the guest list gets bigger because less people are going to come to the in-home party. You want to be more selective with the invitations on the online events. Okay. Um, but the hostess coaching is pretty much the same. You're going to send her the hostess packet. You're going to have her make her wish list. Um, you're going to ask her to use a blended approach to invite people. So not only is she, is she going to send out like text messages, she can send out a Facebook messenger, but you can also as the consultant, ask her for the top 10 VIP list of who she would like to come and the consultant can reach out to those friends. And we can also send emails and an image of um, a party via email. So. All right, um, that's pretty much all I have on hostess coaching. Um, really, the important thing is, is to stay engaged with your hostess, to make sure you're on the same uh, playing field as, as her, um, to make sure she knows what to expect and what's coming next. So lead her along every step of the way. And then what I like to do personally is um, all the way until the party closes, keep her... Um, keep her guests on my party group page if it doesn't run into my next group of um, partiers. And I leave them on there until 
the orders ship so that I can send um, cute little images and say, hey, your order has shipped. Um, I'm so glad and thankful that uh, you purchased from this party and helped out your hostess, Shayla. And then I always make sure and let um, the consultant know how much she would have earned as the consultant. And I thank her for the commission that she helped me earn. But I also, I talked with Shayla, uh, the, the hostess that um, I'm using as an example here. And I said, hey, listen, had you um, been the one to have um, been the consultant on this party? Let's see, the, her party was 1350-ish. Um, yeah, I told her, um, you would have earned about $340 worth of products. Plus, you would have gotten the same $560 in free hostess credit that you already had, but you would have gotten like another $340. So if this is something that you would like to do because you always have awesome parties, I would love for you to join my team. So, and also on the front end, whenever I'm talking with my hostess about what type of party she would like to have, I always, always give her the option. I'm like, hey, do you want this to become your party as in, you would earn the hostess rewards and the commission. I'm happy to help you get started if that's what you would like to do, um, but you have to buy the enrollment kit before we get started so that we have the correct party link to give to your guests, uh, because otherwise, if I start it with my party link and then you decide later on, it gets too confusing um, to make the change at that point. So offer the opportunity right up front, right out of the gate. If she wants to do it, that's awesome. I offer to run the online party for her, I can't do in-home parties uh, to help people get started off, but I will offer an uh, online party if that's what she would like to do. So just make sure you always leave that option open for people because you never know who might want to say yes and join your team. So are there any questions? And I will stop the recording here in just a moment, but that's all I have regarding hostess coaching. Okay. I'm going to end the recording and whoever is on, please feel free to stay on and we can have a brief conversation here in just a moment. Thank you all for joining regarding hostess coaching and um, let me know if you have follow-up questions and we can do further trainings on this. Thank you.